Catching up with a, a local kid done good, and she's still doing good. Uh, Moran Lining recently was hired as the new women's basketball coach at the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse after uh, spending her previous time at Central. And I look at your summer, uh, Moran. You got married at the end of May. Yeah. Middle of June, you get a new job. You're transitioning to a new community. What have you done with your spare time this summer? <laughs> um gone to some basketball games and softball games of my sister Shanae who's 11 who's just killing it so yeah that's about it talk about how this uh, Wisconsin lacrosse opportunity uh, presented itself and what made it the right opportunity for you at this time yeah we like you said we're getting married and I have loved my time at Central and um wasn't looking for anything, especially in that week. We were pretty preoccupied. Um, and my older brother, Connor, he was an alum from UW Lacrosse and wanted to take our other sister, Summer, who's 17, on a visit there uh, after my wedding. Um, they're right now in New Jersey. So they thought while they were back in the Midwest, let's go on a college visit to his alma mater and um, they wanted to meet with the women's basketball coach, um, but never heard back. And so they got on campus and that's how, um, we found out that the job was open because my brother and sister were trying to meet with her and they heard that it had been open for three weeks and was about to close. The search was about to close. And, um, my husband and I were getting ready to go on our honeymoon and my brother called me in the middle of their tour after he found out. And this has always kind of been um, our, I guess, long-term dream was to be all back together, back in lacrosse, especially um, my brother was going to be there regardless. And um, I guess long-term, I because of my ties there with my dad, um, making his Hall of Fame coaching run there, uh, I mean, I, I didn't think it happened this fast, but I, I had kept my eye on Karen Middleton there and maybe thought she'd finish out her career there. And um, I wanted to kind of turn Central around. That was the vision that me and my staff had at Central, but I can't control the timing. And I think my dad, you know, he's a grinder. He's just mm -hmm. grinding up in heaven, I think, pulling all the strings. And uh, this is really what my family needs right now. Uh my sister, Shanae, who's 11, she deserves to be around family that can give her support. And not that we don't have great friends down here in central Iowa. There's just another level of support that can be with aunts and uncles and cousins and my grandma and my brother and his wife and baby. And um, she deserves it. And that's what came to the forefront when this job presented itself. Not to mention, it's a great school um, in a great league. And um, I'm excited to kind of take the next step of what Coach Karen Middleton has built there over the last seven years. And um, not exactly were we looking for it, but I think it, it's meant to be. And I, we feel really good as a family and me and my husband uh, making our way up to lacrosse. And you mentioned the family connection. There is obviously the immediate family connection, but uh, your extended family, pretty much uh, how many people are within 45 minutes of your home now? <laughs> yeah, I think basically my whole mom's side um, and then my dad's side, my dad's brother and his wife, um, my dad's mom. Um, and then we got some cousins in Milwaukee, which is a little bit farther, but um yeah it's it's pretty much all of our closest friends and family which is really special and you mentioned the symmetry central to uh, wisconsin lacrosse much like uh, your dad uh, greg uh, is it kind of surreal that it's happening as uh pretty much we speak it still is like like so funny to say out loud that this is happening exactly um, like my dad, uh, and I feel him with us and I feel like it is the right move 
for all of us to be together. And before he died, he was really breaking through to us as kids of helping us realize that family is everything and family is the answer to, to most situations. And um, we have been scattered across not just the country, but the world these last seven years, eight years. And so it, it still is surreal. And I think when I finally do get to Mitchell Hall and start walking in there every day, I, I think I'll feel even more like my dad. And I love that feeling. I, I want to be like him. And um, yeah, I, I, I also love that it, it looks the same. Uh, the vending machines are still in the same spot where I used to get my after after school snack. And um, yeah, it's it's just, I think that's the best word to use is just surreal. And you're in a sport of uh, coaching. And I guess this uh, happens really in every sport and the potential for it to happen is every sport is there. You get so myopic and caught up into coaching. You're caught up on your practice plans and your recruiting and your season and the focusing on the young people. And how important was that message, especially from a great mentor like your father, that, you know what, your number one team is still the people that support you the most. Yeah, because if anyone knows him, he he had so much urgency with everything that he did in life. And yeah. that's what I that's what I want to try to teach my players and eventually our kids is that you can be all in on everything at the same time. And you can um, grind hard throughout the week in your job or for an athlete, you can get your workouts in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But you also, if you plan ahead, work hard in the morning, get up and get your workout in, you can still have your fun with your family or you can still make sure that you're you're giving to everyone. I mean, if anyone knew my dad, they thought he was the only one. He, they thought that he was only ever thinking about them. That's what's so crazy is that he did that for everybody, not just us kids. And he had six kids to do that too. Like, I'm telling you, he would call and be talking to my brother, Connor, about their health insurance business while making a full scouting report for me and my team while I was at Simpson and helping my sister, Gara, write a screenplay for comedy. And it's just like, meanwhile, raising two more daughters and like, not to mention emailing people back into Cora or calling the Dubuque wrestling coach, McGovern, and and it's just nuts, but you can, you can make a difference when you're serving others and um, just being in the moment and, and trying to keep, I mean, for him, it was keeping God first. Um, and I think that is kind of what guided him, but also his like gritty grinding mentality of, yeah, we are going to work hard and yeah, things aren't going to always be um, easy and sunshine and rainbows, but you can find the positives when things are, um, tough. And actually he taught us to invite the struggle. It's like, so once you get to that point of like, Hey, you know, it's going to be hard. You might as well start embracing the struggle and inviting it and looking for it because that's what makes you stronger. And so it's just all of these lessons that he would teach us ended up being the key lessons for us to get through this hard time without him. Um, the two things that he would always say and that all his wrestlers probably can hear him saying is um, he'd tell everybody you're right where you want to be. He would just make you believe that you're right where you are supposed to be. But he'd pair that with keep going, keep going through the hearts of and keep pushing and, and not settle, but still make you comfortable even when you're uncomfortable. So just as this vicious cycle that can take you, I think, into um, a really successful life. If you're following that with life or your sport or your work or your family, um, I don't even know what you asked me, but th that's my dad. <laughs> and it was very well stated. Uh, looking back on uh, your career and going back to your time as a student athlete and then getting into the coaching uh, profession, was there a moment that you decided that coaching was the right thing for you professionally? Hmm. Well, I think my dad did a great job of instilling 
leadership qualities in me. I think some of it was innate. I, I really like winning people over. I really like getting to know people and I'm really competitive. Um, but he instilled things in me of like going out of my comfort zone and making freshmen feel good and comfortable or um, talking, looking at my teammates in the eye and, and telling them that I believe in them and um, that we can do this. And um, those sometimes when you're the one who has to call people out, that's not always fun, but that's a leader. And he, I think, instilled those qualities in me and gave me the confidence to do it when you know as an 18 to 22 year old or even in high school he he really pushed me to use my voice and sometimes that's scary um in a group of 18 to 22 year olds when you're in college but um I think he made me really comfortable with hearing my own voice and um with all of us kids he really pushed us to be our own person and walk to the um walk to our own tune. Um, so, and I, I don't know, I'm just so much like my dad. I think that I have witnessed him coaching forever and coaching me and seeing all the people that he's impacted and leaving Luther. Um, I don't know if I remember an exact moment, but I think I realized I wasn't done with basketball yet and wasn't done being around sports and that's when I um decided to be of like a volunteer coach at Simpson which the timing of that turned into the the top assistant spot a couple days before season started and I think I fell in love with it even more so I probably knew it all along because my major was uh health promotion that some people thought that when I transferred in maybe the wellness director came up with that major and the wellness director happened to be my dad, but it was a major. It was truly a major. Um, and again, I I kind of gravitated towards what my dad did. He was a wellness director. I wanted to make people healthy and um, that was because of him. So I think I knew deep down that I wanted to, to probably coach. You mentioned uh, you started as an assistant at Simpson and then got the head job at Central. And now you're moving on to a UWL. How have you grown as a coach in your relatively short career to this point, which will last a heck of a lot longer? Yeah. Well, I was so lucky to learn from Coach Nemeth at Simpson, the all-time winningest coach in the league um, and top 10 in the country of active coaches. So how cool. I mean, that's why I headhunted him to go learn from him. Um I think my first thing I learned was not everybody's wired like me. Not everybody had Greg Lawning uh, giving them the juice to drink and <laughs> brainwashing them into being uh, kind of a gritty grinder. Um, but once I learned that, I think I think I started understanding that I got to make those connections. I got to get to know the girls and find different ways to motivate them. Um, to then eventually, uh, I think, start drinking that juice of like, hey, we can choose our positive attitude. We can choose our energy. We can choose how hard we work. Um, so at Simpson, I think that was a really fun time to really connect um, with the girls. And as an assistant, you get to do that even more. Um, and I think Coach Nemeth and I were a great duo. And it was super fun to um, go from our first year together um, and then get the program back up to back-to-back -to -back undefeated conference champs. Um, so it was great to learn from him. Um, but with with him being the head coach and me as the assistant, I got to, yeah, really focus on the, the individuals, um, making connections, uh, the workouts, the recruiting. Those were kind of my things. Um, then when I became a, a head coach, boy, were my eyes open to all of those other decisions that have to be made, um, whether they're the in-game decisions of what we're running or who the ball should go to, or even how you're implementing practice every day. Like there's a lot of decisions that have to be made. And um, when you're the head coach, everyone's looking to you. And um, so I think at Central, that's what I got exposed to were those in-game decisions and I was lucky to, um, our girls battled this past year and 
We were in eight one possession games that came down to the the last um, second. And I got to be in those tight game situations. I think gaining that experience is going to be really good for me moving forward at UWL. Um, but I think also I, I learned that I need to delegate and allow others to um, take some things off my plate as a head coach and um, be willing to empower others. And I want to. I want to empower my staff to um, – feel confident and, and lead. And, um, the more of us that are all on the same page, uh, we're going to be even stronger. Um, and then the last thing is I really, really am bought into now. Um, it all starts with character building and that's what I need to make sure we always come back to. Like you said, you can get wrapped up in, in the practices, the games, the recruiting, all of this fast pace. Um, but if we don't have, women with high character, they're not going to go on and live great lives and lead in society. And that's, that's the main thing. I want to build strong, confident women with high character and, um, the high character will, character will promote, the high character will propel them into whatever they want to do, um, in life. So yeah, I've learned a lot and I've failed a lot, um, especially this past year at Central. And I know that, um, I don't look at failure as a bad thing. I, I, because my dad look at it as an essential thing that you learn from. I got to ask you, and I feel I can fairly ask you, cause I know you pretty well. You mm -hmm. mentioned the delegating. Was that difficult for you? Yeah, it was. Uh, I like things done my way at my pace, which is probably a really intense way at a, at a fast pace. Um, with high energy and uh, I got to remember that, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do something. Even look at the two um, teams that were in the national championship of division one women, LSU with almost all transfers mm -hmm. um, with a brand new coach. And then you got Lisa Bluter uh, with, with a core that had played over a hundred games together. Um, so I do got to remember that there's going to be a lot of different ways to do things. And maybe instead of always it my way, maybe my assistant will have a way to connect with kind of those players that aren't connecting with me at times. So, yep, you're right. It was hard, but I got to, I got to keep getting better at that. You brought up uh, the character development end of things. And I think uh, like in my profession, uh, we do, not a very good job because we're so focused on the results end of things and what's on the scoreboard at the end of the game. And sure. we talk about that being the only thing that matters, but I've been around uh, college sports enough, high school sports enough that the ultimate goal is we're trying to put good kids out into society and sure. make a dip, let them be in a position to make a difference in the world. That being said, looking back at your time as a, a high school student athlete and a college student athlete, are kids any different now than when you played? I don't think they're different. I just think they have more access to um, information. I think they're learning things more quickly and learning things at their pace. And um, I think they still are craving direction and craving attention and craving, um, I guess, success. And um, if we don't, if we're not intentional about giving it to them and um, giving them direction, they will probably go off on a different path. But I, I think, I think they do want to be good kids and, and become, um, great people, but sometimes we may just assume that they're disinterested by maybe their body language or by how much time they're spending on their phone, but heck, we all do too now. It's just a different world. So I was really lucky at Decorah um, in high school. There was so much um, pride in how we did things and wanting to do our best and um, we even called it the decor away. That was something I remembered. And you just knew like, we want to, yes, we want to win. Um, but how you win is usually all of those 
little things of doing things right and holding each other accountable and holding yourself accountable and um, making sure we're being respectful. And um, it's off the court stuff too, or off the field stuff too, of that our, our coaches and our teachers pushed us to be the best that we could be. And a lot of us were in everything. A lot of us were in every sport and band and choir and speech. And I think we just became really well-rounded kids because of, because of that, um, college wise, uh, I was around some amazing women and, um, my time at UNI, I learned so much from coach Warren and, um, the women that were my teammates. And then same with that Luther, um, coach Bailey, another strong woman and my teammates, um, we were all really bought in to the same goal. And when you're all bought in, I think you're all pushing the same way and you, you want to comply and do the right thing. And, um, and then to have a real life example of looking at this young spunky blonde coach Bailey, I, I saw that I could do it too. And, and I'm really lucky to have all those women to, um, if you can see it, you can be it. And, um, yeah, so, I don't think kids are different. I think we just got to be more intentional about the use of our time and really verbalizing things and giving them the opportunity to to become those things and not count them out. And I think it's also one of the things, and I'm speaking from the outside looking in, obviously, but I think most importantly, uh, kids may not want to admit this. They want to be cared about. Would yeah. you admit that? I think so. And I think um, I need to make sure I'm continuing to check myself and being really, really intentional um, with my one year at Central. I think um, it was difficult to try to get to know everybody all at once, where when you're at a place for a while, you get to gain those relationships as you recruit the kids uh, by their from their junior year of high school till their freshman year on campus, that's a lot of talking and getting to know them. And so what I learned at Central is I I should have even done a better job um, and put even more time into it. Um, but like, like, you know, there's a lot of things that you got to put in an offense and a defense and a baseline out of bounds and all these things that really don't matter until, like you said, the girls know that you care about them. And so um, I think – that is definitely something that I'm trying to um, keep at the forefront as I head into this lacrosse job. And from a recruiting standpoint, uh, what have you learned about recruiting in uh, your years as a college coach? And uh, how have you adapted and maybe changed a little bit uh, on how you approach recruiting? Hmm. I think it's the same thing that you're talking about. I think they want to feel cared about and feel special and make a connection. And I think the more comfortable people feel, the more comfortable these young women feel um, with me as a coach, with the campus, uh, with the players, I think the more likely it is that they're going to have a hard time saying no. Now, I do know that they're at the D3 level. We can't give athletic scholarships, but that's okay with me. I think um, if – if girls want to go for it, like I did when I had the dream of going to Vision One at UNI, um, I I try to cheer them on and say, "You're the type of girl that I want. I want someone who um, maybe has big aspirations, and I know the difference that they can make when, if, and when they do come back to the D3 level." Um, now I also know that Division Three um, could bring in different types of girls that maybe want to focus on academics more what maybe they can have more um job shadowing hours at this level compared to the d2 or the d1 world um so i think i've just learned more and more about the benefits of division three and i think i have a unique perspective as i went division one immediately out of high school um was on that side of things and then transferred and had a great experience at luther so um i think i just want to keep making them feel wanted and feel special um, but then also really, really make sure that they are aligned with my vision and how I want a program ran. And, um, if we can make sure we're 
checking boxes as we go will save time later that um, they'll feel good and we'll know it's a good fit. All right, Marianne, we appreciate you taking some time to uh, catch up uh, with where you're at. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to be biased in uh, my uh, position, but uh, you're one of the favorite uh, student athletes I've ever gotten to cover. And you're one, more importantly, one of the favorite uh, people I've ever gotten to cover. And it's great to see you still making a difference in a young uh, person's uh, lives. Uh, congrats on the new position. Uh, congrats on uh, your marriage uh, to uh, Alex. And I know you're going to uh, do great things at Wisconsin Lacrosse. Thanks for taking the time today, Mark. Well, Goob, you you don't get to get off yet because I want to say a couple of things about you. Okay. You are by far, and I no bias at all. You are by far the best, the greatest. You are the voice of my past, my present, and I I just love talking to you and love seeing you and love giving you a big hug every time I do. And um, you're the one of the best people that I've ever known. And you are impacting lives still. And I hope you keep doing it. And I now being up closer to you, hopefully we can run into each other even more. I'd be all for that. Uh, appreciate it, Mo. Moran Lining, uh, Decorah and native uh, Decorah High School graduate, actually a lacrosse native to be precise, but uh, a Decorah High School graduate, a Luther uh, College graduate, now the uh, head coach at Wisconsin Lacrosse in women's basketball.